It's time for the NOLA Golf Academy. And now your host of NOLA Golf Academy, Charlie Ricks. Good afternoon and welcome to NOLA Golf Academy. I'm Charlie Ricks along with Patrick Kristovich, the number one amateur player here in Louisiana. And it's also on the show today is Louis Molina from the Habana Port Cigar Merchants over in Covington. He's going to give us a Cigar 101 clinic today for all you golfers that love to enjoy that cigar on the golf course. It's one of the few places that we can still go to enjoy a good stogie. Lewis has been with us before. He's a lot of fun. Louis Molina is with us. He's a tobacconist from Habana Port Cigar Merchants. It's over in Covington. It's right behind the Home Depot on Highway 190, right behind the Garden Center. Louis has been with us before. And a lot of golfers smoke cigars. It's a fact. It's one of the few places where uh, cigar smokers can go, yeah. right, and, yeah. and enjoy it. It's relaxing. It helps their golf game. And uh, Louis is going to be here to give us the 101 Cigar Clinic today. Lewis, welcome to NOLA Golf Academy. Good to be back, Charlie. Uh, good to be back. Um, yeah, I'm just here to answer any questions, give a little background of just the cigar world. Um, like you said earlier, it pairs well with, with the golfing community. Now, do you see your store? It's in Covington. By the way, your store is... It is absolutely, uh, it, it's, you walk in, it's tranquil, uh, it's comfortable, and it looks like you have a tremendous inventory, which you can tell us about um, a little later. But do you get a lot of golfers that walk into your store? Oh, absolutely. Um, we get golfers before they uh, tee off or right after a round. Um, golfing and cigars go hand in hand for sure. How about women? Do women smoke cigars? They do. It's I guess in this culture still, it's it's seen as a male-dominated um, activity. But if you go to Latin America where all these cigar factories are, fifty percent of the rollers are women. Mm -hmm. So at least from the industry side of it, it's very female-friendly. Okay, let's start at square one. Okay, we're golfers out there, and uh, when you smoke a cigar on the golf course, you you, you battle the elements. Number one, you right, you have the wind. Right. The cigar goes out, but let's start at the beginning uh, with cutting a cigar. How, how, what cutting uh, device or procedure do you recommend? Absolutely, there are pretty much three major or major styles of cigar cutter. The most popular and the one I prefer because it can cut any shape is known as just the guillotine cutter, whether it's a double blade or single blade. I prefer the double blade mm -hmm. just because there's equal pressure applied when cutting that cap and it prevents a lot of mess. Mm -hmm. Your th second style is known as a punch or bullet cutter, which is essentially a circular blade that you punch into the head of the cigar and leaves a small circular incision. A lot of people like that style simply because it leaves a lot of the cap on the head of the cigar and you don't have too much of a mess. And then the third major style is known as a V cutter, mm -hmm. uh, which cuts uh, basically a triangular wedge into the cigar. And it's pretty much a, a foolproof method of, of cutting. So if you don't know how to cut cigars, it's easier to go with a V cutter. Okay. Now Patrick's not a cigar smoker, so oh, he's learning. Okay. No, so he, so we're going to teach him today. Okay. So we started out, we got a nice cut on that cigar. Absolutely. And, and then the next step is lighting the there cigar. There we go. Obviously. Okay. Now that's, that can be the tough part. Right. How, what, what's the best thing to light it with matches, a, a torch or what? So again, like in anything <laughs> in the cigar world, it's all about what you prefer. Now, obviously, you'll probably light, be lighting a cigar in outdoors. So if it's windy, I always recommend a torch lighter. It, mm -hmm. It's pretty wind-resistant compared to, say, matches or a Bic lighter. And you can light the cigar even in the 10 to 20 mile um, per hour wind conditions. Because that's a tough part. Usually, at least one time during the round, usually more than once, hmm. uh, it goes out. 
and now we're we're ducking behind the cart. We're trying to get some. Uh, we put the windshield up on the cart. We're trying to block the wind. So this torch lighter will get that done for us now, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, hopefully you guys aren't golfing in hurricanes. But no, but the, it so, sounds like you guys are hardcore but golfers. The, the, so the, well, you. first of all, matches <laughs> usually don't work. Right. You, you burn. Right. You end up burning your finger for sure. And then the the big lighter after about fifty clicks. Sure. You know. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, it gets annoying. So it's that's annoying. why I always yeah, you mean recommend for the, the non smoker, it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Especially if the guy's putting. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Cigar smoke is great. You can see where the wind's going. You get a guy in the group, <laughs> but it's a wind meter. It's perfect. Absolutely. But in, in the end, I that's why I always keep a torch lighter when I go outdoors, especially uh golfing. Okay, so we're gonna relight it now. Now, here's another question on the relight is Usually there's some tar ashes on the end. Uh, the tobacco is sort of singed. Do you right. just light the, bur- the the burnt part, or do you take your cutter and clean it? I mean, what do you do? Well, what I recommend, typically if you're golfing, you're not going to leave a cigar extinguished for a long time. Um, so you can relight it right away, and you won't have an issue. But anytime I relight uh, what was a lit cigar before, you want to kind of toast the surface area for a little while longer to expel, like you said, some of that kind of burnt carbonized portion from the previous session. And that'll kind of what's called purging that kind of tar and, and burnt up portion. So you can have a clean smoke when you relight it. Okay. So now, okay, we're talking about lighting, relighting. Once in a while, I'll light the cigar and I'll, put it, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it a few minutes later and it's only burning up one side. And it, right. it doesn't look very good either, does right. it? Right. Yeah, and that's known as <laughs> canoeing. That's known as canoeing, oh. and there are a few factors as to why that can happen. Um, one being, if it's especially really windy, you'll find a higher probability of that happening. Number two, and most likely if it was bunched incorrectly, um, meaning one, one portion of the, the cigar maybe was packed a little more dense, then mm-hmm. you can have that happening. Um, but if the canoeing occurs then I just touch it up with that lighter to kind of get that even uh, burn starting again. Uh, yeah, I, I, it looks like I don't get a good light. You know, I don't light it properly. It's and that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, you want to make sure that the entire surface area is lit. If you don't, then that's when you can have that canoeing. Um, now, I've be- seen people light a cigar without – it's not in their mouth. They just hold it between their fingers and they're lighting it. What are they doing? Just, oh, with not lit and they're just holding it? Yeah. For some people, it's a good kind of prop, I suppose. I mean, maybe it uh, helps them with their, their golfing. Maybe it calms them down. But, I mean, I've seen people that come into the shop and buy cigars. Mo- obviously, most of the time, 99% of the time, it's they're going to smoke it. But I, we have some customers that simply buy a cigar just to chew. Yes. And, you know, you still get that nicotine absorption and to kind of calm you down. Uh, but I've seen some people just hold it, too. But that's kind of rare. Mm-hmm. Now, once in a while, I'll get a cigar, and it's, uh, I guess you would, it, you would call it a tight draw, where right. I, you just can't get anything out of it. You know, it kind of hurts your cheeks after. If, right. I, how, how do you remedy that? There, there are a few uh, methods. Um, yeah, if it's tightly rolled, it, it, first of all, it's unfortunate. Right now is a good time in the cigar industry because the quality is so high, you won't see that happening. But if that does happen, one trick I like to do is simply roll the cigar between your thumb and forefinger and kind of gently massage it. That may kind of um, uncrinkle, I guess, that knot. And typically the, those knots uh, occur near the head of the cigar. Okay. Lewis, I want you to stay with us a little longer. we got a lot to talk about uh, before we let you go. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When, when, when we come back, let's talk about how we keep a cigar fresh, even um, – there's a lot of times you'll have one or two, three cigars on, on the golf course and you don't smoke them and you want to keep them until that next round. I want you to tell us a little bit about that. We're going to take a short break. We are with Louis Molina. He's the tobacconist for Habana Port Cigar Merchants right off Highway 90 in Covington, right behind the Home Depot, behind the Garden Center. Go see him, Louis Molina. We need to take a short break. Stay right there. You're listening to NOLA Golf Academy. A lot more than just a good time. This is the NOLA Golf Academy with Charlie Ricks. Having fun while improving your game. It looks like I'm a wreck. It's in the hole. This is the NOLA Golf Academy. It's in the hole. 
Welcome back. I'm Charlie Ricks along with Patrick Kristovich. We're with Louis Molina. He's a tobacconist at the Habana Port Cigar Merchants off Highway 90 in Covington, right behind the Home Depot. And before we get back to Louis, we're going to give away some free golf right now, Rudy, at the Sandestin Golf and Beach Resort for beautiful championship golf courses. It includes the cart. And all you got to do is call Rudy at 556-9696. That's 556-9696. And you're on your way to play golf at the Sandestin Golf and Beach Resort. Lewis, we're talking about cigars. And how about the size of a cigar? Is, is, is there a nine-holer? Is there an 18-holer out there? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there's sizes for whether you want to only devote Five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, two hours. We even have a cigar that we usually sell right around this time called the Chief that measures 16 inches by a 64 ring gauge, 66, which will take you about five hours. So <laughs> you certainly want to choose the length cigar according to how much time you can devote to it. So, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for maybe a, a nine-hole cigar, I'd probably recommend a Toro, which is a six-inch cigar. Um, if you want... A uh, full course, uh, maybe a double Corona to what they call an A. So the digger from LaFleur is about a nine-inch cigar. That'd be perfect. Now, let's, what about the type of cigars for the golf course? I know a lot, a, a lot of people I know that smoke cigars, it's sort of therapy. They want to be out on the back porch. Uh, it's late in the evening. They might have a little cognac, a glass of wine with it. Um, they're thinking. That's when they do their best thinking. So they really like a nice cigar. But on the golf course, you're throwing it on the ground. You're, it's rolling off the cart. You don't know where to put it. It's in the mud. It's in the sand. So should you buy a really good expensive cigar for the golf course? That depends on the smoker. There are some people I've seen that they can enjoy a really fine, maybe expensive cigar and not, I guess, treat it roughly. Uh, but for most of us, I think... I would recommend maybe a $5 cigar and below. So in case you drop it or it falls in the pond, you don't have to worry about having lost a huge investment. It, it, I've kind of associated it with, with, with wine drinkers. I mean, you got people that they have their table wine and they have their, their nice wine. And, yeah. you know, you meet, mm -hmm. you meet wine drinkers that refuse table wine. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's about the same thing. Absolutely. I mean, the cigar world, if you know the wine world, you can apply those same techniques and knowledge to handmade cigars. Another parallel, cigars, and speaking of wine, Patrick, a lot of uh, wine lovers, they enjoy the quest of finding that inexpensive bottle mm -hmm. that just is awesome, and they're so proud of it. Are, are cigar smokers the same way, Lewis? Absolutely. I, you know, I would say the majority of people, though, who enjoy cigars, I guess they're not what I would consider purists or cigar nerds, as I call it. Um, but you certainly have a lot of smokers that it's that thirst or that search for knowledge. Same in the wine world. I mean, it's you don't have to. We tell people you don't have to be an expert to enjoy cigars. But a lot of smokers like to find out maybe the country of origin, the story behind every blend. I mean, it's a fascinating world for sure. So you talk about blending. You were talking about this off air a little while ago. Uh, it's something that you're trying to get more more involved with. Tell me about blending cigars. How many different? I mean, w just go into it. I don't know enough about it to really ask the, the right thing here. Tell me about blending. Absolutely. So we tell people if you don't like a particular blend, it doesn't mean that all cigars are going to taste like that. Just like in the wine world, you have a wide spectrum of flavor profiles, as we call it. Whether you're looking for something maybe cedary, earthy, um, sweet chocolatey, cocoa, all these flavors, I mean, can be found in, in, in the cigar world. And is, is it more regionally based? Is that how you get your different flavors from the leaf? A lot of it, yeah, depends on the country of origin. Um, the, the particular spot of on the tobacco plant, if you divide a tobacco plant, they're what they call primings, and each priming can have its own unique characteristics, and that can affect you know, the final um, blend or profile that a particular manufacturer is trying to attain. Okay. Uh, now, Lewis, let's talk about most 
the pricing of cigars for a second. Most people think it, it, it they're too pricey. You know, I don't want to spend twenty dollars, uh, even fifteen or ten for a cigar. Can they come into Havana Port Cigar Merchants and buy a cigar, let's say under eight dollars, that they could enjoy? Absolutely. We tell people don't judge the quality of a blend based on the price. It's kind of like in the wine world. Um, it's no indicator of quality or, or you know premium um, flavor profiles. We tell people first, what are you looking for in terms of the flavor? And then we'll give them a wide selection uh, on various budgets. So, I mean, you can spend as little as a dollar. Uh, most people will spend in the $5 range. Um, and then some people, yeah, will go up to the $20 range. But, you know, I, I kind of like to give uh, a, a smoker a lot of the choices so they can decide from there. And we have a house rolled um, cigar. We have a, ma- a factory uh, in Nicaragua that, that rolls what we wanted was an everyday smoke at a great everyday uh, price point. So and, in the three to four dollar range, and it's a great cigar. I've yeah, had, I've had. Matter of fact, I've played golf with that quite a, quite a few times. Do you classify the 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 golfer that maybe smokes cigars occasionally? It, 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 you look at it as a hobby. It, w- it can, but you know, I mean, uh, there are people that come into our shop maybe once a year. Uh, mm-hmm. Some smokers maybe once a month. Your typical what I would consider uh above or average cigar smoker maybe smokes one a week which isn't a lot but um yeah everyone has their 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 their, uh preferences on when and how often to smoke now you will go out to special events weddings uh i guess bachelor parties yes with the the cigar roller you you have the table out there you're rolling your cigars uh yeah we offer that service we've done that for quite a few weddings um even corporate events where we have a roller that will come in and uh, roll, uh, do a, a rolling demonstration just to show people, whether you're a smoker or not, how a premium handmade cigar is made. Okay, so that's uh, let's, let's give the address and how folks can get in touch with you. I, I mentioned earlier you're in Covington. Now, you're, you're tough to find unless you are looking for you. You have a general idea of the right. uh, vicinity of Havana Port Cigars. If you're heading down Highway 190, that's is it north? Yeah, basically the easiest uh, kind of general uh, areas is I-12 and 190. So we're north of I-12. Uh, if you look for the Home Depot, we're right across the street from their garden center, and it's in a strip mall. Um, the easiest way we tell people is, uh, yeah, you can either call us or go to our website at HabanaPort.com. And uh, you can call us, and, and we'd be glad to give directions. But it's in a central, uh, centralized location in St. Tammany. Okay, tell us about this inventory. I know I've, I've been there quite a few times. I, I walk into your humidor, and it looks to me like there's tens of thousands of cigars. So tell, give us the scope of, of, of the brands that you have. Yeah, well, we're proud to say that we have probably the, the most diverse offering in the state, if not the, the region. Um, yeah, we have... We have a lot of your standards, but we like to focus and find those boutique small batch cigars. And that's where the exciting part of this industry is at right now. People are trying to find those small handcrafted uh, batches or uh, those runs. Uh, For example, we have a a cigar. It's called the Four Kicks Mule Kick. Uh, Only 34 stores in the country got that cigar, and we were the only store in the state and in Texas to have gotten that. So we're pretty proud of our selection and we can all, you know, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll guide um, the, the, the novice or expert in, into our uh, humidor. Okay. Now give us a couple of the hot brands right now. If we come visit you, we were looking for a good cigar. Give us a brand right now. I'd say the four kicks Four kicks. Okay. Lewis Molina. He's a tobacconist with Habana port cigar merchants on highway 90 in Covington behind home Depot. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay right there. You're listening to NOLA Golf Academy. Welcome back. I'm Charlie Ricks along with Patrick Kristovich. I want to thank all of our guests today. Mr. Louis Molina, we just spoke with with Havana Port Cigar Merchants. So until next week, get out and play some golf and remember to put on the sunscreen.
You've been listening to NOLA Golf Academy with Charlie Ricks. To learn more, log on to nolagolfacademy.com.